shot cut. Gets it. Oh, he's still going. Oh, he's going to He's going to score. He's got the five. It's a touchdown. Evan Smith. Oh, that is absolutely ridiculous. It should never have happened, but Emmett Smith does the impossible this time. I can tell you already that rebuilding the Arizona Cardinals won't be easy. Their best player is an offensive guard, Leonard Davis. I don't hate that they have an elite lineman. You know my philosophy, win in the trenches. The problem is that he's the only elite player they have and he'll be doing his best to keep these quarterbacks clean. That's right, I said these quarterbacks. I plan on using all of them. McCown is on his final year year under contract. I want to see if he can be the future. King is the veteran in this group and looking to Well, Navarre is the rookie who has the potential to become the future backup if things don't work out for McCown this year. At running back, the future is Marcel Ship. There's no doubt about it. Emmett Smith will be taking a back seat to the young man for his final season, or at least I think it'll be his final season. I also see the Cardinals spared no expense to sign Smith. He's double what Ship is worth this year. I noticed that some teams in this game use their fullback as receivers. I don't think Hodgins will be used in that way on this team, but it's nice to have a good one. The wide receiver position is probably the most excited I am about with this team. They have second year man Bolden, first year rookie Fitzgerald, they have weapons in the passing game, problem is they don't really have anyone to pass to them. I would like to have a solid third receiver on the team and I think Johnson could be that guy. Freddie Jones is going into his final year on this team and let's be honest he's going to the back half of his career he's a good player and uh, I don't really see him wanting to stay on this team if we don't look good this season. The offensive line is interesting they have key pieces like Pete Kendall at center it's always incredibly important to have a solid center in this league and behind him is Frank Garcia. He's on the final year of his contract, 10 year pro. This is the exact type of player that I definitely don't need on the team because I'm definitely not going to give him another contract. And this is where the line begins to falter a bit. Like we know about Davis, we don't know about the players he's working with on this line. Spikes and Roundtree don't exactly give me confidence going into the season, which makes not being able to change player positions difficult. It'd be cool to move Frank Garcia to the guard spot for some help this season, but sadly you can't even change players out of position in the depth chart. The final position on the offense are the tackles. LJ Shelton is fine enough, Clement and Lecky are not. I think Clement can improve, but considering he's in his seventh season, I don't see a lot of improvement. Another position I'm not entirely confident in. At defensive tackle, I'm leaning towards starting Darnell Dockett. I know that Davis and Bryant are both much better than him, but with Davis in his sixth season, i rather let the young player get some playing time this season if you haven't noticed. I'm chalking up this season as a tank year. Uh, there's way too many players at defensive end. I'm not a huge fan of having so many players in one position. And with that being said, Burt Berry and Calvin Pace are the clear starters this season. We have some decent backup with Vanden Bosch, Wakefield, and potentially Johnson. You probably already noticed Vanden Bosch is on his final year of his contract. Can you, um, <laughs> smell a trade? Same situation at the outside linebacker position. Way too many players. I don't like having so many in one position. Problem here is I can't really get rid of any of them. But one, anywho, Thompson and the rookie Dansby will be the starters at outside linebacker. At inside linebacker, we have McKinnon, who is the clear starter for this season. Behind him is Darling, whose contract is not something that I like for a player of his rating. Here's a position that doesn't have enough players on their contract. Dwayne Starks Industries is our best player at cornerback. We have some decent guys behind him in Hill and Macklin. I don't expect 
players past that third depth position to get significant playing time, though I would still like to have a fifth corner for injury reasons. At strong safety, Adrian Wilson sits alone. He's pretty good, but this is another position where I'd like to have some depth just in case of an injury. While at free safety, we have Dexter Jackson, and you know on paper this secondary seems pretty good. Starks, Wilson, and Jackson makes a solid secondary. We just, uh, you know, gotta clean up that second corner spot. Finally, the kicker is Neil Rackers. The punter is Scott Player. Before we move on to the season, let's talk about those players I potentially wanted to move on from. I potentially looked at the Jets, who could use a decent backup. Then I went to the Browns, who were willing to part with a third round pick. I didn't feel like this was a fair trade, since you could probably draft a good center in the third or even a fourth round in this game, so I did not accept that offer. One thing I also wanted to mention is to make trading much more difficult, I, I wanted to max out the interest bar, which means Garcia and a third for a Browns second round pick but I still feel like I was ripping off the Browns, so I canceled the trade. Eventually I found an offer I liked with the Texans, but I wasn't able to max out the interest. I decided to move on for now. Russell Davis was another player I wanted to trade away. I went back to the Texans, this time offering Davis and Garcia for their second and fourth round pick, and once again I felt like I was ripping off the computer, but after fiddling around I managed to settle on Davis and a fourth round pick for their guard, Weigert, and a fifth round pick. And the Texans didn't want to trade away a guard. That was a big waste of time, but it was cool to see the computer not wanting to part with players despite the max interest because of depth reasons. So I moved on to the Steelers, noticing that they needed some depth at defensive tackle. I also wanted better offensive tackle. Fordham was available for trading, eventually settling on Davis in a fifth round pick for Fordham and a seventh round pick. I'm happy with this trade, even if we gave up a little bit more than I'd like for a tackle, but keep in mind tackles are incredibly hard to draft in this game after the first round. He can be a stop gap player for this year and potentially next year he is under a two year deal. Cheap contract as well. I think we made out okay with this trade for now. Well, Russell Davis will be off to Pittsburgh where he'll be sitting behind Hampton, but I wouldn't be surprised if he gets some playing time. I have no clue if they run a 4-3 or 3-4, doesn't matter because he's a good backup or a starter. I also wanted to move on from Vandenbosch. I doubt I'll be able to pay him what he wants after this season is over and i like to get some value for him. Both the Chargers and Bills need a defensive end, both willing to part for a third round pick and I know I didn't want to trade a center for a third, but defensive ends are another position along with running backs and quarterbacks that are extremely hard to draft after the first round. I was okay trading him away for a third. I accepted the Bills offer. He'll be starting in Buffalo with Showbowl. It'll be interesting how they pay both of them with how many other players they have on their contract for that spot. I didn't mention how we have too many players at outside linebacker and the only player that won't hurt our cap would be Rial Johnson. I released him. Same at wide receiver. Too many players. I prefer only having five at wide out. That means Gilmore will be the odd man out and that wouldn't give us a penalty. I also needed some depth at corner. Asante Samuel is always my go-to in this series when I need an extra corner. I signed him to a three-year deal. It's a cheap deal. He's a depth signing. I don't ever expect him to see the field unless the season completely falls apart and I also wanted to sign a depth player at strong safety and decided to go to a familiar name from my Oakland Raiders rebuild. Sadiq Shabazz will be the backup to Adrian Wilson. I did try to trade Frank Garcia one last time. I ended up going to the Buccaneers who could use competition at center. We could use a guard and the Bucks had plenty on hand. I ended up offering Garcia and a fourth round pick for O'Dwyer and a fifth rounder. The Bucks now have depth behind Wade. If an injury happens, it wouldn't derail their season completely while we now have a decent enough player next to Davis. He's also under a four year contract which allows me to move on from spikes and round tree if I have to. The NFL thanks highly of us ranking the Cardinals as the 18th 
best team in the power rankings. Let's see if we can finish better than that, or we really are who I think we are. Let the rebuild officially begin with an away game against the division rival St. Louis Rams. The way the season opener goes will likely set the tone on how this season will go. Well, we're fucked. I thought that our secondary would be pretty good, but um, <laughs> I'm beginning to, to have second thoughts about that now. On the bright side, Anquan Bolden is looking good. There was an injury to Bryant Johnson, you know, the guy I had high hopes for to be our number three going into the year, which meant I had to find his replacement. Welcome back, be Ryan Gilmore. We now have to shake off that season opener and hopefully have a better game against the New England Patriots for week two. With under three minutes left in the game, Cardinals ball down 28-21. Can McCown drive the team down to tie the game. A sack and two incompletions. With a turnover on downs is not what a franchise quarterback does. Patriots, Cardinals. Tom Brady calls signals at the 12 yard line. He's so dangerous, buying time. Moves out of the pocket, fires, touchdown. Cardinals would lose 35-21. Defense continues to be disappointing. Can't stop the passing game or the ground. At least we didn't allow 55 points this week. If there's been a trend so far, even though it's been a small sample size, but still, it's that we are scoring more and giving up less. Let's see if that continues against the Atlanta Falcons in week three. It's the beginning of the fourth quarter, Falcons ball. Defense has been bending, but not giving up too many points. Down by three, they would give the ball back to McCown, who couldn't get it done last week, but he's been given another chance here. And he throws an interception. Defense does their job, only giving up a field goal and 40 seconds to pull off a miracle. McCown can't get it done. Cardinals, Falcons. Michael Vick is calling signals at the 20 yard line and he bursts forward for a first down of, ooh, takes a licking though. That's twice now that McCown has been given a chance to tie or take the lead in the final quarter and he just can't do it. On a positive note, defense has been getting better each week. McCown hasn't been terrible. He has as many touchdowns in the first three games this season that he had all of last season, but he also has as many interceptions. He's, he's also not very clutch. This may be a mistake, but it's time for Sean King to rule the NFL. His first game as a starter will be against the New Orleans Saints in week four. In the final minute of the first half, defense comes up with an interception and Sean King put up this fantastic drive. Yeah, that was enough for me to put McCown back in. Also, I found a glitch that looking at the player card in the game cast causes your player to wear the wrong uniform. Nani? That's kind of neat. We're now 0-4 in a year, at least we didn't allow 30 points. The defense continues to clean up their mistakes from the season opener, but this offense has been terrible. I can't really express how much we suck. We can't throw it, we can't run it, we can't win it. There was another big injury in this game. Adrian Wilson will be out for five weeks with a hamstring injury, which means Shabazz is going to get some playtime. Great. You know, at this point, the season is lost. Let's see what Navarre can do at quarterback. He is a rookie, but with nothing to really play for because let's be clear, this is not a playoff caliber team at the moment. Let's see what our young players have. What's a better game to have your young rookie make than his first start against a division rival, 49ers, a good team, in an away game? This won't hurt his development at all. I'm quite surprised the score was as close as it was. I was expecting a blowout, honestly. Navarre didn't have a terrible performance. Larry Fitzgerald popped off. Marcel Ship. He, he's not great. Defense gave up 300 yards to Ratata, bending but not breaking. I'd rather not bend at all, but that's what happens when Adrian Wilson misses a game. On the bright side, we take a break from losing in week six, though in week seven, we can take on another division rival, the Seattle Seahawks. In the second half, Cardinals down by three, and they started by returning the opening half kickoff to the house. Then they force a turnover on the following drive, not able to score a touchdown, but to make it a one-touchdown game. 
They did manage to even string together another long drive, not for a touchdown, but to make it a 10 point game going to the fourth quarter. The Seahawks have been running the ball well with Sean Alexander. You can see here they're just running it down our throats to make it a three point game again. All Navarre needs to do is string together a few first downs to run the clock and he throws an interception. Okay, the Cardinals were able to force a fourth down, but the Seahawks wanted to win. They converted for a first down, drive now now inside the 10 and on another fourth down they go for the win instead of the tie and they score the go-ahead touchdown with about a minute left in the game the Cardinals need a touchdown McCown wasn't able to do it back in week two and three but Navarre has no problem finding the fullback for a go-ahead score looks like we're going to get our first win of the I feel like if this game wants you to lose you're gonna lose well that sucks. We could talk about how good Navarre looked at the end of the game, but truth be told, he was 8 for 25. That's not good. I still think we were robbed, but if he didn't play like Tim Tebow, we probably would have won this game before the final drive. With that being said, I'm putting McCown back in. I think he wins that game because it wouldn't have gone that close towards the end. We now take on Buffalo and it's been a rough stretch of games and let's be honest, we should have won that last week. Well, Navarre may not be good, but we were at least competitive with him in the game. We just got clapped by the Bills. Navarre is back in as the starter. I'm back, baby! Also, another injury to one of our backup receivers, Nate Pohl. Not too many injuries this season, which is, well, it's nice. Look at these teams we're playing against. We're hitting all the teams who are on a hot streak right now. What's up with that? An interception that leads to a quick touchdown followed by a big play from Navarre to Johnson that would give the Cardinals a 14-0 lead going to the second quarter. Then right on cue, Navarre throws an interception. Dolphins drive down the field for a touchdown and screw it, why not go for two while we're at it? Then in the final minute of the half, AJ Touchy Feely finds Chambers to take a one point lead. The Cardinals would manage to kick a field goal before half to reclaim the lead, then halfway through the third, Navarre throws another interception that would lead to the Dolphins reclaiming their one point lead again. In the fourth quarter, Dolphins would add another three points, which means Navarre has a chance to do what he did in Seattle. A last minute go ahead drive and on fourth and one, they pass the ball. Incomplete. We dropped our eighth straight game to start the year. The only positive thing I can say about that is, uh, well, when Navarre is in the game, the team seems to compete. He may not be a franchise quarterback, but he's definitely good enough to be the backup going into next year if I choose not to bring McCown back. Week 10 will now be against the New York Giants. Well, forget what I said about this team competing. They look like an 0-9 team today. I'm benching the VAR and guess who's back? Back again, Josh McCown. At this point, do we just try to go 0-16 so we don't have to compete for the first overall pick? I mean, we're taking on the Panthers next and the Giants blew us away. I feel pretty confident in a loss. So right away, this bend but don't break defense was bending pretty hard to start the game. Eventually snapping, allowing the Panthers a touchdown on the Cardinals' first drive. They gave the Panthers a taste of their own medicine until a penalty, then they began to show why they're 0 9. Then once again, the Cardinals went into full bend mode. The Panthers were pretty much able to do anything they wanted until Starks Industries comes up with an interception in the red zone. Skipping to the second half, Cardinals with the ball, and every now and then they show that if they want, they could be good touchdown gives them their first lead so um i have gamecast playing in fast mode i speed it up and slow it down in editing for story purposes but a problem with fast mode is it doesn't show when a team blocks a punt and that's how the cardinals got it inside the five and eventually take a 10 point lead the cardinals would get the ball back one more time in the third quarter and anquan bold and bold and bold and showing why he's the number one on this team there's no way we lose this game right 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 well before the third quarter ends seattle flashbacks begin to happen we're 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 gonna lose this game two minutes left and the panthers have the ball and when the cardinals defense needs to make a stop on fourth down they can't do it twice and allow the panthers to be within three with 47 seconds to go but they don't get the onside kick and guess what gang we won our first game of the year cardinals 
Panthers. Josh McCown in the red zone at the 14. He calls the signals and buys time with a quick rollout. Now on the move again, kind of flings it. The defense was bending, broke a few times, but they did more than enough to win thanks to the offense doing just enough. Surprisingly, it did cost the team three starters. It was worth it. Now that we got our first win, getting our asses handed to us by the New York Jets won't hurt as much this week. Let's start in the fourth quarter, down 17-7. Cardinals have some heart in them. Doesn't hurt when you can get big plays like that. Then the next drive, McCown does that, which would lead to a Jets touchdown with two minutes left in the game. The Cardinals are marching down the field and Anquan bold and bold and bold and takes them down to the one and Marcel Ship punches it in to make it a three point game with a minute to go. Then the Cardinals recovered the onside kick. Wait, you're telling me there's a chance? Fourth and 15 to keep the game alive and McCown becomes Mr. Clutch, marching down the rest of the way to tie the game, meaning it goes to overtime and this bend but don't break defense was cracking, giving the Jets the chance to win with a kick, and they miss. The Cardinals march down the field into field goal range, and instead of continuing to grind it on the ground, first down, they kick a field goal. They missed the field goal. Then the defense shattered, allowing the Jets to survive. This was the second game, in my opinion, that we should have won, but instead we lost. Could be 3-7 and seven on the year, but we sit at 1-10, and 10, and I would say there's potential on this team, but if I did, probably somehow we lose that too in the final seconds. Lots of good teams we're playing against this season. It's rough, but good, because it should let us get the number one pick. This week against the Lions, the team once again in the fourth quarter finds themselves with a chance to take the lead after a big Brian Gilmore touchdown with a failed two-point conversion. All the team needs to do is stop them, but when they do, on fourth and three, they get penalized. They even forced a fumble but couldn't recover it and the defense broke when it mattered most. We're now 1-11 going to the final four games. The divisional rematch against the 49ers last time Navarre was playing. This time it's McCown. Probably should have stayed with Navarre. Defense continues to make me worried but that's what the season is for. A benchmark to see where the team is right now. It's it's below the bottom. That's that's yes. I put Navarre back in as a starter but after checking out McCown's stats I decided to put him back in. I do think this will be the final game for McCown as the starter. I want to see if this team can improve the results from the season opener against the Rams this week. In the fourth quarter, down by a 13, Cardinals were able to march down the field with Ship, capping off the drive with a touchdown run. Then the defense did their job giving the ball back to McCown to lead a game-winning drive, and he throws an interception. The defense wasn't able to stop the Rams a second time, and that's how it'll end. Rams, Cardinals. Marshall, Marshall, Marshall Fox is just thinking, let's get out of the shadow of our own goal line. There's a first down. What shadows? The only shadows of defenders behind him. He could go all the way. A 98 yard run. Considering we gave up 55 points the first time, I call this a success. We still only have one win, but we're still, we're, we're the most dangerous one win team out there. Believe it. Now we're back to Navarre, the final two games of the season. First game being against the Seahawks. Remember, we should have won this game earlier. And in the fourth quarter, tied 10-10, the Cardinals just had a complete meltdown, giving up a punt return for a touchdown. Then the defense letting them move all over them with a touchdown coming in the final minute, but unable to recover the onside kick. Cardinals, Seahawks. Bobby Taylor is set in his own territory and he'll get the punt at the 40. He's going to break a tackle right there. And look at him go. He could go all the way. 60 yard touchdown. I tell you, this team can scare other teams, but they can never actually beat them. Going into the final game of the season, there's two other teams with two wins, Cardinals being the only team with one. That means if we win, there's a potential to be the number three overall draft pick. And a loss guarantees the first overall. We'll be taking on a very good Bucks team. I have mentioned the schedule this season has been rough. Yeah, it wasn't even close, which is good because it means we now have the number one pick in the draft. It's bad because, well, we, we only had one win. We also had Fitzgerald get injured, at least 
It was at the end of the season. I think I gave Josh McCown a fair chance at the starting job. He won the only game for the team, but let's be real, he's not a starter quality quarterback. He's a good bridge quarterback. That's exactly what he did this season. I'm most likely moving on from him since he was in the final year of his contract. I think John Navarre can be a decent backup since I'm moving on from McCown this coming off season. Navarre will be his replacement and Sean King, he, he did not roll no one. I had high hopes for Marcel Ship, but it looks like he's not as good as I was hoping he'd be under four yards to carry, but his 10 touchdowns give me hope that he can be a good bruising back. I'm most likely going to replace him as a starter. Emmett Smith, on the other hand, had a resurgence of some sorts. I probably should have started him, but with him being at the end of his career, it was a smarter idea to keep him as the backup. Now, I know what you're thinking. How did did Bolden not get a thousand yards on the season? I was thinking the same thing. I thought he was having a great season. The truth is that there weren't that many 1,000 yard receivers. Only 8 in the NFL over 1,000, 4 over 1,100, and 2 over 1,300. It seems extremely hard to get over 1,000 in this game, through simulation anyways. With Bolden getting most of the attention from the quarterback, Larry Fitzgerald wasn't able to get more than 500 on the season. and that that's pretty low, but hopefully it's just because the quarterbacks were bad and the defense couldn't get off the field. Though Bryant Johnson was averaging more than Fitzgerald, and that's because he was missing half the season. On the bright side, he's looking like a solid third. Also, Casper, he's looking like a solid fourth. This dude can jump to the moon. Red zone threat, anyone? On the defensive side, Ronald McKinnon led the team in tackles. He also made the Pro Bowl this season, rightfully deserved. He was the highest voted player in his position. I'm sure his stats are inflated since he was on the field for most of the year, since the defense couldn't force a three and out, but still, he's at least productive. Thompson was second on the team with tackles and also made the Pro Bowl along with McKinnon. His stats weren't as impressive, but he's still a young player, a core part of this rebuild. Dexter Jackson was the last player on the team with over 100 tackles. He's also another core player on this defense. He's supposed to be a free safety, but he's playing like a strong safety. Another big player for this team is Carlos Dansby. He won Rookie Defensive Player of the Year. He had as decent of a season as McKinnon, and I'm really happy with the linebackers on this team. Burt Berry led the team in sacks. That's awesome and all that, but like I, you know, want someone who can like stop the run. <laughs> I'm not sure if Burt Berry can do that, but for now he's a really, really good pass rusher, and we do need those. Darnell Dockett was second on the team in sacks, and this man is very well rounded. This was why I wanted to start him this season to get as much experience as he possibly can. Him and Dansby are making their rookie class look great. I wanted to bring up Adrian Wilson really quick. He didn't really do much to stand out this season, but he's still young. There's hope he can produce like his 2002 season. Dwayne Stark's industry was the only player with multiple interceptions this season. Not only did he have multiple, he had almost as many interceptions as tackles. I don't know if that's a good or bad thing, considering that he had 9 interceptions. I'll say it's pretty good. Neil Rackers missed 5 kicks this season, including the 1 in overtime against the Jets that would have won the game for us. While Scott Player had more than half his punts go inside the 20, which means we're stalling out a lot on offense near midfield since none of the kicks were touchbacks. We also had one kick return for a touchdown in the Seattle game by Josh Scobie-Doo. I do feel like the game is random when it comes to wins and losses. I say that because I did do a Detroit Lions rebuild and they are 11-5 in year one. And then again, we're 1-15 and, and that seems accurate. Sadly, they won't move on to the divisional round. Vanden Bosch is riding high with the Buffalo Bills and Frank Garcia as a backup in Tampa Bay. Let's see if our former players can have more success elsewhere. I should probably stop talking about teams I have connections with. They seem to lose. In the conference championship games, there's the Oakland Raiders, a team we rebuild in Madden 2004. Let's see if they can return to the Super Bowl while in the NFC, the only team we beat this year, the Carolina Panthers, could return to the Super Bowl as well. Look at that. They both made it. Wouldn't it be funny? that the only team we beat this year was the Super Bowl champs. So are we like, you know, better than the Super Bowl champs? 
Does that make us the real champions? Well, that's it for our first season in this rebuild. Looks like we sucked, which is good for the purposes of this video. Now, if it was season five and we're one in 15, sucking would be much worse. Looking ahead at next season, Mel's mock draft has us selecting a running back with the first overall pick. And I'm honestly tempted since our running game was rough and going quarterback in the second round, that's a problem that you'll have to wait and see for a solution in the next video. See you in year two.